Okay, so last time we were looking at that TTT diagram, we saw was that we had the perfect eutectoid composition. So we had 0.76% carbon, which gave me that perfect point, you know, right here on our diagram. And so everything was great and hunky-dory. My question then for you is, well, um, what happens if we are not perfect? What happens if we have some issue we have too much? carbon. Well, let's see that. So in this case I have 1.13 weight percent of carbon. So I am over here, you can see the line, and if that's the case, what that means is I'm going to have a hyper eutectoid composition. And so I'm going to have some pro eutectoid cementite, which is simply saying that I have cementite mixed in to my austenite, okay? So I have cementite mixed in with my austenite. And so I'll have austenite and I'll have some sections that are cementite within there. So you can see that right here. That's what's happening. If I'm over in this range, I'm just pure austenite. But as soon as I get, had too much carbon for that particular temperature, then I reach this point where I'm going to have it. Okay, so what does this look like for me in transitioning? Well, we can see it on our diagram. Okay, so this green line, black line, and red line, that is like the perfect eutectoid composition. This blue line, though, right here, is kind of showing us a little bit of a difference here. So, there is a temperature which is above 727 degrees Celsius, where all of it will still be austenite. You can actually find that right here. So if I go across, this is my point, and I go over to here, then it's like 850-ish, you know, 850-ish, we'll say. And so, so long as I'm above that temperature, I'll be all austenite. So you can see that right here. As soon as I go below that temperature, though, I'll begin to transition. Now, literally just below it, I'm still going to be like 99% austenite. But as I go further and further down, you can see that I'm going further and further away from this line, which means I'm getting more and more cementite. And so you can see that right here. I go from being pure austenite, I go below that temperature, so now I'm below 850, and I will begin to go from just austenite to austenite and cementite. And so it's going to transition there. And then what's going to happen is I'm going to eventually transition into perlite. And you're wondering, like, well, what does the perlite look like if I have too much cementite in there? I'm going to kind of draw it for you. So earlier we saw those kind of like crystals that had, you know, like zebra stripes in them. And so this is, I'm going to draw it as if it was perfectly perlite. So perfectly perlite, it would just be all these zebra crystals. However, if I have too much carbon, I'll form cementite structures, which is just pure cementite. You're like, well, isn't that in there? But these are going to form at the boundary. So I'm going to have some actually cementite that's forming at these boundaries that is just pure cementite. And as I go you know, to increasing amounts of carbon way over there, I'm going to have bigger and bigger boundaries. And the opposite is true as well. If I went um, you know, hypoeutectoid over here, I always start seeing ferrite structures, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. Okay, so this is one thing we can run into here, one little um, wrinkle in our transitions. The second one is simply saying, what happens if I cool it a lot? Like, you know, we did a little bit of subcooling here. What if we do a bunch of subcooling? Well, surprisingly enough, if you do a bunch of subcooling, it's actually going to slow down your transformation. You're like, wait, what? It's because I'm going from being perlite to something which is called bainite. So that's bainite right here, and this is a picture of bainite. So bainite is different. What you can think of it is before I had nice even layers, and that looks kind of like it has layers, but it's not the same. So this right here, that would be what I would describe perlite as. Bainite is different because you can say it's more like I have a big blob of ferrite, and inside of that I have, you know, elongated cementite particles. I'm doing my best here to try to draw that. So just there is a difference. Not like I'm overlapping here. It's more like I'm sticking some um, long, not quite needle-like, but very long elongated um, cementite particles inside of a bunch of ferrite. So this is going to happen if I cool it really, really quickly because that carbon is not going to have much time to diffuse at all. And so it's going to have to have a lot more trouble getting into um, those alternating layers. Now, as you might be able to guess, 
the more subcooling I have here, like when I went from coarse perlite up here to fine perlite right here, I got harder. And you might be able to guess that if you go to bainite, you're going to get harder again, um, and also less flexible. So this is starting to change the material properties even more for my material. So showing another little example here. So right here, if I cool down to that temperature and just leave it, 100% perlite. If I go down to that temperature and leave it, that's 100% bainite. And the question you might have is, well, can I have a mixture? And the answer is yes. And we'll show you an example of that a little bit later. So one last microstructure I want to talk about is what's called spheroidite. Spheroidite. So these are when I have, you know, I still have a ferrite matrix with, you know, um, cementite particles just kind of inside of it. However, what I did was I heated up the bainite or the perlite. Doesn't really matter. It can be either one. Um, just below eutectoid for a very long time. And what's going to happen then is because I'm heating it up, not going quite to the point of making it austenite. Because I'm heating it up, it is going to start diffusion. It's going to begin to diffuse. And it's going to try its best to reduce surface area. Because remember, we saw the energy diagram earlier. Surface area increases my energy, while my volume, bulk energy, decreases it. And so I'm always trying to find that perfect thing. So in this case, it's going to try to minimize its surface area and maximize its you know, volume to surface ratio so that it can be as stable as possible. Um, as a note, if you think about it, those bainite things are very elongated particles. Think of long like needle or plates. Um, that's not going to make it very flexible. It's going to be very easy and brittle. Spheroidite, however, because it is a circle, they won't have as um, much of an issue of having stress concentrators. Like right here, these sharp edges are stress concentrators. And so because it has rounded itself out, this is actually much more ductile while still being fairly strong. Okay, I think that's it for this time. Yes, it is. So next time we'll go into a few more different microstructures and we'll also start talking about, well, how do I get like 50% perlite and bainite? How do I get some mixture of all of these um, so I can have exactly what I want, the properties I want for my metal? Thanks for listening. I'll see you all later. Bye-bye.